persistence pays off. Um, sometimes when we're persistent, we actually get accomplished what we want to accomplish in spite of the obstacles. A number of years ago, I uh, went to Haiti and I had made arrangements with people at uh, SLM Ministries to pick me up at the airport. And I was going to stay there overnight and then uh, go out to the country the following day. So I got to the airport. It was uh, um, in the afternoon and and uh, so I got through, got my luggage, got through customs and everything and got outside and I was waiting for someone to pick me up and there was no one there to pick me up. And I waited and waited and it was before the days of cell phones so I couldn't call anybody and and of course the taxi drivers were saying um you need a ride you need a taxi and I was like no I don't need a taxi and my problem was that I knew that the guest house for SLM had moved across the road from where it had been. But I didn't know which house. And I didn't want to get over there with a taxi and then not know where I was going and just be banging on gates trying to find SLM. So I didn't want to take a taxi. And uh, yet no one was coming to pick me up. And the longer it went, the more persistent the taxi drivers were getting. And I didn't know what to do. And so finally I said, I gave somebody some money and told them to go inside and call this number and ask them if they're coming to pick me up. Well, he went and he came back and he said, yeah, they're gonna pick you up. Well, I don't think he ever called. Uh, matter of fact, I know he never called because I checked with the SLM people and no one had called. So, uh, but, so I thought, okay, they're coming. Well, then I was trying to decide, what am I going to do? I thought, well, if it goes too much longer, I set myself a time and I thought if it goes past that time, I'm going to get a taxi to take me over to the waterfront and I'm going to get a tap tap and I'm going to go out and hijack and I'll just stay with the people there. I, I'll be fine. Um, so that's what I'm going to do if no one shows up. And then... I was walking around outside the airport a little bit, and then I saw the SLM truck, Dodge truck. There are very few Dodge trucks in Haiti. And I saw this gray Dodge truck inside the gate at the UN compound. And I told some of the people, that truck is here to pick me up. And I saw a lady then with a veiling walking inside the airport and I told people that lady with the veiling she's here to pick me up go get her tell her I'm out here so somebody ran after her and brought her out and we met and she said I've been looking all over for you but I didn't know who I was looking for and, and uh, here it was a single lady that had she had just been there a week or two she hadn't been there very long she didn't speak any Creole and I said how, how did you get your truck? How did you get the park inside the UN compound? <laughs> and like you're behind a locked gate. And she said, well, I just pulled up there. and I told him I, I need to park in here. And she said, he was telling me something. I didn't know what he was telling me. And she said, I just kept pointing to the gate, telling, motioning for them to open the gate so I could go in. But he was shaking his head no, and he was talking to me and, and uh, Finally, she said he held his badge up on his coat and showed me his badge and said, no, I can't go in. She said, I just put my hand over his badge and pointed to the gate and said, open it. And she said, eventually he gave in and he opened the gate and let me drive in and I parked in there. So <laughs> it was kind of amazing. Like, here's this lady. She doesn't speak the language. And she got inside the UN compound uh, to park her truck. And so it all turned out well. I got to where I was going. Everything was fine. But her persistence was amazing. Uh, I doubt if there's very many people that could have gotten inside the UN compound. 
especially not a person who didn't even speak the language. <laughs>